I'm on a quest to find an albino fallow deer. And I thought, what better way to do that than with a helicopter? <laughs> My name is Chris Waters, the Huntsman. Let's do it. Before we get started, I just want to quickly promote a website that I've built, huntingtrips.com.au. If you're looking for your next guided hunt, safari, or access to unique property to hunt on, this is where you're going to find it. Check it out. It's free to use. So just the other day I was having a conversation with my friend Anton and during that conversation I let slip the fact that I'm a hunter. Now it turns out Anton's a hunter as well and he's the kind of hunter you want to have as a friend because he doesn't own just one, he owns two helicopters as well as being a part owner in a local airfield. Now. I was obviously curious, we had a conversation and he mentioned there's a herd of fallow in the area near the airfield that he constantly sees when he's out there in the helicopter and he said there's rumoured, rumoured to be an albino fallow in that herd. So I literally just got a call from him and he said, Chris, jump in the car, come out, jump in the chopper and we'll find the albino fallow deer. Uh, so I don't have my GoPro or any camera equipment, I'm going to film this all on my phone. It's probably going to be crazy and rickety but hey. Let's go try and find some fallow deer. <laughs> After arriving at the airport, went through all the standard safety briefings with Anton, and then he then proceeded to take the aircraft out of the hangar into the airfield. And I didn't realize they actually do that in one piece, like with the landing pad included. Uh, it doesn't actually kind of land on the grass, but it has this landing pad that essentially comes with it. Uh, and then we hopped in, the helicopter did all the kind of pre-flight safety stuff, which is pretty exciting. And, you know, as you're sitting there, your, your heart's just kind of, thumping in your chest getting ready to fly it's pretty fun to start off the journey anton and his co-pilot jack wanted to take me around the peninsula and show me the beautiful coastline and i've lived in this area my entire life and yet my breath was taken away by the beauty of this rugged landscape to see you know the the smattering of human populations kind of distributed around the area and the subtle changes in vegetation and landscape as you move from boggy marsh to lush paddocks to rocky and rigid outcroppings with the surf panning into it just absolutely took my breath away. Now before we go any further I want to stop and quickly talk about albinism or albino or albino animals because I think it's super interesting. So albinism is a congenital condition defined by the complete absence of pigment in the skin, in the hair, in the feathers uh, resulting in that all white appearance. Obviously the pink eyes is obviously a giveaway as well. That's the, the red blood cells showing through. Now, albinism affects plants and animals and humans, and obviously it affects deer as well. But mostly what you're seeing when you're seeing white deer is actually not albinism, not true albinism at least. It's a condition called leukism, which is only a partial loss of pigmentation, whereas albinism is a complete lack of all of the malignant in the body, so no pigment at all, whereas a deer that has leukism can have all white body but still have pigment in their eyes for example. Now in terms of how rare albinism is in deer it's hard to say because obviously they're more open and prone to predation so it's hard to record numbers but roughly we're saying one in every 35,000 deer or so is albino so again if you see one it is super rare. Now whether it's albinism or leukism it doesn't really matter because for thousands and thousands of years white deer have been venerated as gods and worshipped as gods. They've been sought after as highly prized trophies from hunters. There's a whole lot of culture and history around them. In fact, some cultures see them as ugly and kind of full of disease just because of that genetic trait. It's really, really interesting. In fact, in some cultures, it's believed that if you kill a white deer, you receive like 100 years of bad luck. In fact, there's a culture in Africa that believes if you kill a white deer, you yourself will be killed instantly, like struck down by the hand of God. Super interesting stuff. But anyway, with that said, let's get back to the video. Once I'd had my fill of that, we then moved over to the marshy boggy area where the deer were populated. Now, they've been thriving in this area predominantly because you can't hunt deer. Now, it's a conservation zone and you can hunt duck, but you can't hunt deer, which means the deer have congregated in this area, which also explains why albinoism has been able to take root. Uh, because if these animals were found out in places like the high country or out in paddocks, they'd be easy picking for predation, given they stand out so easily. Another reason why, especially in the last couple of months, these herds have really been thriving is because the rain has been so good, the vegetation is lush in the area. So they haven't had to leave this conservation zone to go out to the paddocks and risk predation, risk being hunted to get what they need. They can get everything they need right here. They can get sex, they can get food, they can get shelter. Well, you know, what more do you want really? Now, after seeing a few mobs of fallow in groups of about three or four, as well as some individuals scattered around the area, we still hadn't found what we were looking for, which was that mythical albino deer. Now, Anton, he was committed, hats off to him, because we were getting quite low on fuel, and he was committed to showing me, he's like, you know what, we're not gonna leave until we find this deer. And sure enough, on the last pass around the area, we saw it nestled down between some shrub, 
a beautiful albino fallow doe just sitting there. And it was just amazing to see, just glorious to see. These things are kind of a rarity in nature and to see it from that elevation just took my breath away. After circling around the deer a few times, we started to make our way back towards the airport and I was just reminded at that point how lucky I am and and how random this experience was. Like just, you know, hours before I'd just been sitting at home working and then just received a call, you know, through relationship and through conversations that enabled me to come out and have this amazing experience. It just goes to show you how, you know, diverse and unexpected things can happen in life and how you really have to take every moment for granted. Oh, I should mention as well, when hopping off the landing pad, I slipped <laughs> and nearly fell off. <laughs> but that's just classic me, right? Wow, that was completely insane. I've never experienced anything like that before. And we found the albino deer. How crazy is that? Um, Anton's been saying, actually, usually the herd um, kind of hangs around the airport sometimes, but because of the abundance of feed due to all of the rain, they've been sticking around that lake. So it's interesting. Like, man, being up there on top and looking down, that different perspective completely changes the way that you view hunting. And it puts me in mind of what a falcon or a hawk or an eagle must experience when they're looking down and hunting prey and the different things that they would need to consider like the thermals and conserving energy and the point of entry and all this different stuff absolutely amazing now Anton didn't ask me to do this but I'm going to give him a plug anyway um Go check out Geelong Helicopters if you've got a chance. They do tours, a whole bunch of different things. And, you know, say that Chris, Chris sent you. He might even give you a deal, <laughs> which you'll hate me saying that. But uh, he's a good chap, and I uh, definitely recommend you go support him. Can't recommend that experience enough. Anyway, until the next time I see you, bye. Wait, wait, before you go and watch another video, make sure you go check out the website that I made, huntingtrips.com.au. If you're looking for an Australian guided hunt or hunting course or safari or property to hunt on, it's the best place to find it. It's a great way to support me and a great way to find an amazing hunting experience.